All right, I'm gonna show you a series of agility drills using ladders and also mini hurdles um, and also some cones that you can use as warm-up activities or in individual workouts or you can send these videos home with your kids so that they can work on footwork drills which will benefit you in pretty much everything you're gonna do on the basketball court. All right, Drew, first one we're gonna do, let's do one foot in, run through, okay? Go ahead. Good, now the key that I'm looking for, stay low on your shuffle, good. We do this as a progression, so he's gonna go through three times. Each time he's trying to get quicker. Also teach good arm actions. Quick feet, light feet, make no, make no noise. Here we go, second time through. Good, use our arms, use our arms. Good shuffle across, back it all the way through. Third time through, full out, full out. Here we go, use your arms. Quick feet, good. Shuffle across, finish all the way through. Good. The next couple I'll demo without Drew doing three progressions, um, but so you can get an idea for what each drill is. Let's go uh, lateral, right shoulder first, two feet in, two feet in. So the goal on this one is gonna be to get both feet in each square on the ladder. Here we go. Good, still use those arms. Good, pivot and, yep, pivot and across. Good, let's work the other shoulder now, left shoulder lead. So whenever you do lateral, you wanna have both lead feet working, both lead feet working. Here we go. Arms, arms, arms. Good, quick feet, pivot and go, good job. It's all right, I got the cone. Next one, let's go right shoulder lead, um, ollie shuffle, if you remember the ollie shuffle. And actually, let's go uh, left shoulder lead so that you can see it forward. The key to the alley shuffle is it's almost like a scissors dribble where you're working quick feet. He's going to uh, work all the way down the ladder. Lead foot is going to be the first foot into the next square. Okay, here we go. Alley shuffle. Oh. Yep, there it is. That's it. Quick feet. Land that foot in the square. And we're shuffling across, back pedal. Go ahead and demo the Ali shuffle, other shoulder lead. Other shoulder lead. Yep, go ahead. Get that foot in there. Good job. Let's go. Skier slalom. Okay, so this is going to be forward facing. It's similar to the Ali shuffle and he's going to progressively work down the ladder, alternating which foot is in the square. So he's going to be almost like he's a slalom skier, is the idea, okay? Go ahead, Drew, and demo. Good, working all the way down that ladder. Foot squared and center. Back pedal back. Good. Last one. Everyone's favorite, the icky shuffle. And yes, it is based off of Icky Woods' dance from the 89 Super Bowl against the 49ers. And I was cheering for the Bengals. Icky shuffle. I cue it by saying uh, one foot in. I'm sorry, two in, one out. Two feet are, always, are, are in the square, one foot out. You never have two foot feet outside of the square. So Drew, yes. And let's go through Drew two times. Let's go through slow the first time and then pick up your speed the second. Okay? Here's the icky shuffle. Good. Slow it down a little bit so they can see the footwork. Good. One out, two in. One out. All the way across. Let's pick up our speed this time. Pick up our speed. And again, I cue it. Two in, one out. Two in, one out. Two in, one out. Go ahead. Good job. Good. And again, with all the agility ladder stuff, focus on them lowering their center of gravity. They're better athletes when they're lower, and they can get through these drills quick. What do you do if they don't have a ladder? Uh, if you don't have a ladder, you can measure off, um, they're about 12 inch squares. You can measure it off with sidewalk chalk. Um, you can put tape down on Athletic, the floor. Yeah. Um, you could even use cones to a degree. Uh, but ladders are relatively cheap. About 20 bucks, I found this at Dick's. 
You can use Badger Sporting Goods. You can look online. They probably have better deals out there for you. All right, similar to the agility ladder, we're gonna use something called mini hurdles, which really emphasizes them getting their knee up. It also strengthens the calves, feet, ankles, um, and allows them um, to improve their balance is the big thing. And also some foot quickness as well too, because there is a strengthening component to this. So we will show you a series of mini hurdle drills. I operate the same way as I do with the agility ladder and that we do three progressions through these. And when we go lateral, you want to um, you make sure you emphasize both lead legs so that you're developing strength equally in both feet. Okay, Drew. First one we're going to do is just a simple run through. And again, the focus is on lifting that knee up and being active with the foot or being quick with the foot down to the ground. Here we go. Good. Come through one more time, Drew. And I want you not to kick your legs out, but think about being straight up, straight down with that leg. Here we go. Lift that knee up. Good, good, good. Better, better, better. And again, coaches, one thing you can emphasize, when they get to this cone, you need to break down at the cone and shuffle. Similar to how you would do it in a closeout, um, defensively. Okay? Let's do, up to the hurdle, we're gonna do two-footed hops. Two-footed hops. Call them kangaroo hops if you want to. Go ahead. Good. Use those arms. Good. Go through one more time. The key with the two-footed hop is you don't want to be breaking, so you shouldn't hear this pounding noise with it. They should be on the balls of their feet, and they should be light, light touches. Go ahead. Use those arms. Good, good. Back pedal through. Okay. Let's do lateral two-footed hops. Lateral two-footed hops are next. Right shoulder first, good. Go ahead. Good. Don't be narrow with those feet. And remember to pivot, pivot out of the drill. Let's demo uh, left shoulder lead, left shoulder lead. Get good base with your feet. Don't get them stuck together. Good base with the feet. Here we go. Good. Balance, balance, balance. Good job. Next one we're going to do, the last two we're going to do, right footed hop, one foot, right footed hop. Remember to keep your nose over your toes, stay balanced, okay? And you are ready, go! Good, 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 good. And let's step on the left, left footed. The other thing, just rest, the other thing about the hop, Think about trying to do a leg cycle, is what we call it, where the heel gets up to the butt. You want to actually cycle through. That will be an advanced jumper. Um, but the real thing is make sure they get that knee up. You want to put your foot down nice and flat. You don't want to land on your heel. You don't want to necessarily land on your toe. You want to be flat footed. Here we go, left footed. Good. We're going to get the knee up. Knee up. Good job. Cross those feet on there. Good. And we'll show three extensions. If you don't have many hurdles, you can use any line in the gym and accomplish very similar things on your uh, agility. Okay? Let's use the gray line over here, Drew. First one I want you to do, we'll do forward facing line hops. Okay? And all you're going to be doing is going forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. The key with these, think about quickness and then give them a time duration. So maybe 30 seconds to start out with, and by the end you're able to do 45 to a minute. Okay, but judge based on your age, knowing what your group is. Um, it can be a conditioning drill, get the heart rate up, as well as an agility drill. Okay, forward facing hops, two feet. Go ahead. Go. Yep. Up. There it is. That's good. Pick your feet up though. You want to be over that line. There it is. Let's go for 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Next one we'll do lateral line hops. Okay? Lateral line hops. And again, Drew, make sure we're getting up over there. Okay? You want to actually be moving. You ready? We'll go for 15 seconds. Here we go. Go! Rest. And then 
And the last one in the sequence is going to be one footed, both right and your left foot. And the thing to remember as you put these in, you can probably shrink your uh, time, your duration when it's one footed because they're not going to be as strong with that single foot as they are with their two feet. Okay? Right footed first. Let's do right foot. And this will be lateral. Right footed lateral hops. So it's going to be. Okay? bounce. Ready? Go! Yeah, be quick, be quick, be quick. Stay balanced. Stay balanced. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Good, good, good. You feel that one, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And the other thing, you may have noticed Drew teetering a little bit. That's core right here. You can work planks, push-ups, sit-ups, any of those things into your workouts as well. Um, as punishments for missed free throws or they're turning the ball over too much. Those are great in-house strength exercises that are appropriate for this age group. They don't need to be lifting weights, but functional strength support. Let's, um, let's demo a left-footed forward facing, okay? Left-footed forward. So you're going to be, oh, yep, exactly. Not lateral anymore. Left-footed forward. And again, you do this with your right or left foot. Go ahead. Good. Get that foot up. Get that foot up. Hold the line. Good job. You're actually hopping. Actually hopping. Good. Let's go for five, four, three, two, one. One, rest, okay? And even if your athletes aren't doing these perfect, I think the key to it is by the end of the season, they're improved from where they were at the beginning. And that's all we're looking to do with athletes in this age group is to get them better. All right, next drill I'm gonna show you is a shooting drill. And it really should be the first shooting drill you do once you get in the gym. Uh, and this is all about developing good habits and getting multiple practices. Um, I run this as a three spot progression, which means as you make shots, you move back two steps. Um, so it's three spots, three shots, okay? Uh, we're in tight, we're looking for perfect shots. So Drew, at the first spot, first thing I wanna check is are his feet set and are they balanced? His shooting foot, which is his right foot, should be slightly in front of his other. Um, his ball, the ball should be in the shooting pocket. I also want him shooting off of his right hip. That right foot should be in the middle of the hoop. So that's the second thing I'm checking for. Elbow needs to be under the ball, and I call that a waiter position, like you're a server at a restaurant, okay? Eyes are on the rim. I don't care if it's front or back. I just want them looking at the rim, which is the target. And then the last thing we're focused on is our follow through. So Drew, go ahead and demo a good shot. Good, 1,001, 1,002. Now that was nothing but net, so that counts as one make. When we're in tight, our goal is to make three nothing but net shots. Three perfect shots, okay? Number two. Good balance, eyes on the target. Good lift, good follow through. Now that one hit the back of the rim. What I teach our guys is that if the, the ball hits the back of the rim or if it's shot long, you need more backspin on the ball. The way to create more backspin is by using these two fingers, last on the ball, pointing down to the ground. So you can practice that real simple um, by pointing those two fingers. Generating more backspin puts more arc on the ball. If the ball misses short, you need more power, which is generated from your legs. And those are two easy cues that every player can remember to self-correct their uh, own shot. Here we go. Let's make three. Okay. Yep. Foul. Snap that wrist down. Notice the ball went long when he didn't snap his wrist down. Perfect. Excellent form. Also, you're holding that foul through for a two count or till the ball goes through the net. Leg. Get some foul. Still need legs. But the ball is in line. As a coach, I want the ball in line every time. If you're missing right or left, that's a, your shoulders need to be square. Um, or you need to check their feet to make sure they're square to the target. If they're missing short or long, you can make those two easy adjustments. Good. 
Little more snap. Snap that wrist through. Better. Now you just place. Go. Need one more perfect one. Ah, uh, back rim. And they may get frustrated, but you wanna wanna make sure they get the feel of what a perfect shot is. Legs, legs, legs. Perfect. Three makes. Drew will go to the next spot, or wherever you have shooting. Once all three spots are completed, <clears throat> then you take a step or two back. At this spot, I allow the guide hand on the ball. You're not shooting a jump shot, though. Guide hand can go on the ball. Good deep knee back. Here we go. Cross your body. Straight up, straight down. Also, at the second spot, they don't need to be perfect anymore. Unless you want to make that an extension. Here we go. Snap that wrist now. Snap the wrist. There you go. A little more. Same thing. You're missing the same spot. Better. Go. Good. Made three from there. We'll go all the way around the circle. Last time, you take two more steps. At this point, I allow jumping. So you see that the progressions go from perfect, where everything's in close, and uh, you're, you're focused on all the mechanics, taking a step back, adding a deeper knee bend in the guide hand to make sure it doesn't affect which way the ball goes, and finally you're shooting real life jump shots. Here we go, let's make three. Stick the foul through. Yep, hold it. Still coming across, uh, across slightly. Stay in line. Okay. Yep. Still finish your cross your line. Good job. Good job. Good job. When setting the drill up, three spots are just below the block, right in the middle, and uh, the opposite side, same across. Okay? I've also seen the drill done where you use the block and you use the window. Um, the key to that is you're aiming for the, shot, the top of the shooting square. Everything else would say the same on the shot. Okay, once you've done your three spot progressions and they've gotten practice reps shooting the perfect way, we're going to work on shots on the move. What I like to do is a series called, uh, by Kevin Eastman, um, that's a chair drill series. Okay? As the coach, you could have a player in this position, you're standing behind the chair. Okay? Um, the player is going to throw you the ball, and you will set it down in the chair. The key to the chair is it forces the player to get low and have to be in a good basketball position. The other thing we focus on is ripping the ball through or sweeping the ball through, and also good footwork. This chair mimics a defender as well as forces them to get low. Okay? So as you come up, jump stop, we're nice and low. Okay? We're chitting the basketball and we're ripping through exactly with our inside foot. And this creates a seal against the defender and allows you to get an angle on that defender. Okay? The other extension I add is I'll reach in to make sure that they secure the ball with some strength. Okay? First one we're going to do in this series is just right-handed layups. Go ahead, Drew. Let's start from the beginning. Now nice and low. Rip through. Good. And the ultimate goal, especially for the older groups, is to get there in one dribble. Okay? You don't want to spend multiple dribbles because it slows the game down. The older we get, the faster the game gets. So fewer dribbles makes a faster play. Here we go. Right hand again. One more time. Right hand to lay. Good, 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 good. Way to get there in one. Okay? Obviously, the next progression would be do left handed layups as well. And we are doing from the wing. You can use the wing, center, or the opposite wing whenever you do any of these. And I've done all three in a shooting session. Okay? Let's do one dribble pull ups. One dribble pull ups will be next. Here we go. Good. Hold that foul through. Hold the foul through. 
The key to the one dribble pull up, you need to create space away from your defender with that. So I'm always harping on get space, create space. Here we go. Hold that foul. Good. And you have the option of going either direction with these. Do one more. Good, good, good. Also, when shooting on the move, they need to make sure that they re-square their feet to the target. And a lot of times with young shooters, uh, shooter, people that are learning how to shoot, you'll see them miss right or left, which is that cardinal sin of shooting. Check their feet, check their shoulders to make sure they're square to the target. Okay? Last one we're going to do, one dribble with a counter move. Okay? That counter could be a step back, could be attack of the rim, it could be a crossover into a space in the painted area. We'll demo all three. Okay? Let's do step back first. Okay? Here we go. One dribble hard, step back. Give yourself one more dribble on a step back. The counter is used when the defender reacts to the initial move. So you may, you want to hold your dribble on this and you get to use one more or two more, depending on what you want to do for the drill and how skilled you're at. Let's use a dribble on a step back, okay? So one dribble hard, hesitation, step back with the dribble again, okay? Great space, here we go. One, hesitation, step back. Boom, hold that foul for me. Let's do one more, go the other direction. Step back, good. Finish with a strong foul through, great distance on that step back. Uh, next one we'll demo for you. Let's do a hesitation attack the rim. Hesitation layup, okay? Here we go. Hesitate, attack, good. And on the attack, you want to push that ball out in front so that you can get to the rim in as quick an amount of time as possible. Let's do one going the opposite direction. Out and the floater. All right. Last one we're going to do. Let's do uh, one dribble attack, crossover for a pull up. Okay? One dribble attack, crossover for a pull up. Here we go. Good. Good. Pick that ball a little bit more. Let's demo one more. Be creative with these. There's thousands of combinations you could come up with. These are the ones I like to teach. Um, and sometimes you can allow your athletes to be the ones that think of what they want to do, especially on those counter moves. All right, I'm going to intro for you a drill called the Mikan drill, which is as old as Mikan is, one of the original basketball players. Okay? It's working simply on footwork, rhythm, and finishing high off the glass, shots around the rim. It's uh, essentially continuous layups, if you want to call it. The key to this is you got to keep the ball chin and high the entire time you do the drill. Okay? I'll slowly walk through, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when one of your guys may do this drill. Okay? Again, the ball stays high. We're using good layup form, so you're always jumping off of your inside foot. Aiming for high in the shooting square. Once you rebound it, keep the ball high. It should be a cross step, pivot, and you finish up on the glass. Cross step, pivot, keep the ball high. Work on finishing, okay? Whoop, this guy. Okay? You can extend this by giving him a time frame and a number of shots you need to make. We need 35 in a minute, 40 in a minute. 45 is an advanced level mic and drill in one minute. The other way you can extend it is by having them do it first, going through a second time, having them trying to beat their score. We're always working on progressing and improving, no matter what. Okay, Drew, come in here and let's demo a mic. Right side first. Let's start on the right side. Ready? Go! Finish high. Step with that inside foot. Yep. And what you notice is the left hand is weak, or whatever their weak hand is typically is weak. Don't throw that ball, shoot it. Shoot it, finish up. Chin the ball, don't let it come below. Practice good feet. Get 
Get your rhythm. Get it to the backboard. Good. Let's go. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. And again, the key to it is you can have fun with it. Make it fun for the kids. Challenge them. Put a score to it. Beat your score. Um, and then remember those few things that we're looking for. Good footwork, jumping off your inside foot, finishing high off the shooting square, and keeping that basketball chin up high. Okay, so, okay, so go ahead. So what the key is two ball mic in. This extension is a two ball mic in. Okay. So if you have advanced players that are good at the mic in and they're looking for a drill to go a little bit further, two ball mic in. We're also reversing it, and instead of facing the backboard, we're underneath the backboard, okay? Ball always is trying to remain high, okay? You're working on one-handed shots, rebounding with one hand, and keeping the ball high. And again, my left hand is weaker. Okay? All right, next drill we're going to show is a ball handling drill. Um, and this is also done as a progression where you're working on right hand, left hand, front crossovers, between legs, behind the back. Um, and this is a tight cone drill is what it is. You can extend this as far as you want to. You can put it at angles. You can create different spaces between. Um, I choose in tight because it really focuses them to have to handle that basketball in tight spaces. First one we're going to do is right-handed dribble, okay? Right-handed dribble. Whenever we do dribbling drills, head needs to be up, eyes need to be out so that they can scan the court and see their open teammates. Right-handed cone weave. Here we go. Good, good, good. Stay low. Pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball. Couple of key. Yeah, you can go back to the start over there. Key things about ball handling. You dribble with the pads at your fingertips. You don't dribble with the palm, okay? Also, in tight, you're not gonna want anything higher than a knee dribble, okay? So for you younger, the coaches that are coaching the younger kids, think about how you may have to adapt this if they're not as skilled dribbling that basketball. Give them more space, allow them a little higher dribble. Let's go left hand, left hand next. Head up, head up, head up, good. Pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball. Handle that ball, keep it off your palm. Good, good. Next one we're gonna do, front cross. So they're gonna do a front cross in front of each cone, like it's a defender. Front cross, here we go. Getting low on that crossover. And what they soon develop is a rhythm for it. You almost can hear the cadence of the ball handling. Here we go. Good low dribble, good low dribble. Don't keep that thing out. Careful on that they don't carry the ball, especially if they get that out. Keep it in nice and tight. Okay. Uh, between the legs, we'll go between the legs next. Here we go. Good. Handle that ball, keep your hand on top. Let's get it tighter, lower this next step through. Be quicker, good job. Be quicker, good job. Good. And obviously you may, may need to pull that one back if you are with the younger age groups. Uh, but this can go all the way up through 8th grade. Last one we're going to do, behind the back. Behind the back. And this is an advanced skill. Here we go. Good. Keep it low. Keep it low. Good job. Just way to hand the ball. Good job. And back through. Good. Handle, handle, handle. Good. So again, in tight. You can change your number of cones, you can change the direction, the angles, the shapes, the uh, width in between. I showed you right-handed, left-handed, front cross, between the legs, and behind the back as my progressions. Next drill we're going to show is actually a combo drill working on ball handling as well as our shooting sequences. Um, so it's similar to the cone drill that we just showed. You can go through right hand dribble, left hand dribble, front cross, between the legs, behind the back. What you're going to add is a shot at the end. Okay? And again, it's layups, uh, one dribble pickups, and then counter moves are the three that I always use. So what Drew's going to demo here is a right hand weave through the cone, finishing with a right handed layup. 
Go ahead. Good. Low eyes up. Push that dribble out. Get there in one. Okay. Let's do it one more time. Really get that dribble out in front. Push that dribble out in front of that last chair. Here we go. Right hand dribble, right hand layup. Push it out there. Oh. Oh, finish up high. Give me one more until you make it. Cross, one dribble pull. Front cross, one dribble pull. Again, the chair acts as a defender. Hold your, hold your foul. Let's do the same thing, go the opposite direction now, off the chair. Push that ball out of that space, square up, hold that foul. Hold your foul. Do one more, let's go behind the back. Uh, one dribble counter move, okay? Good, step back. Okay. Good, I like how you have the foul. Last example, let's give a different counter. Behind the back, different counter. Stay low. Hesitation, one dribble pickup. Good. Okay. Again, multiple progressions, be creative, know your uh, ability level and the ability of your athletes there, and modify these drills based on that. All right, last drill we're going to demonstrate is a rebounding drill. And again, you want to hit all the categories of basketball passing, shooting, rebounding, ball handling, defense. Um, not just offense, X's and O's, okay? I call this rebounding drill a Superman drill. And when we focus on uh, rebounding, there's a couple things that I like to harp on. One, you need to rebound the ball with two hands, not going up with one and snatching. Two-handed rebounding. When you come down, you need to come down wide and chin in the basketball. And I teach elbows out. Elbows out protects the basketball from the defender. It doesn't mean they swing elbows or throw elbows, but it, it creates a barrier so that a defender's not so willing just to reach in, okay? And the last thing is they need to pivot and complete a pass, out an outlet pass, in order for it to be a, a true 100% rebound, good rebound, okay? The way the Superman drill works, you have a line out at the, you know, just a couple steps in from the wing. It could be in a couple more steps in, Drew. Drew's gonna pass me the ball, so your player's gonna pass coach the ball, and then I'm going to throw the ball off the backboard. I may use spin, I may hit the rim, I may throw it high, I may throw it low. Give them different ones because you want them to track the ball off the backboard. Get used to doing that, okay? So we just throw the ball up, chin it, chin it, go to low, pivot, outlet, and then they're going to go back to the end of the line, okay? Imagine if you have a team, you're going to have a line of about seven out there. Again, you could have a player in the, the thrower position, and you could just be watching. Okay? Drew, let's go live here. Let's go quick. Chain, out there, go. Get there, point it, yes. And I use a term called point the ball, getting it at its highest point with two hands. Here we go, let's demo one more. Chain, out there, go. Last thing I like to do, because I think rebounding is a mentality. So I have them yell, I want that ball. The best rebounders are the guys that go pursue the basketball. Whether it's rolling on the ground or they go up and get it at the highest point. They have a thirst for that basketball. So I want to hear, I want that ball this time. Here we go. I want that ball! Good yell, outlet, let's go. Let's do two more, two more. I want that ball! Chin it, you go. Good job. Last one. Oh, I'm the ball! Good job. Chin it, and you're out. And again, you want to work both sides of the court. You're always trying to teach these skills in balance so they become as good at their right hand as their left or all spots in the court.